America's favorite pastime, getting its season started in Korea. In a game that's final. Except it's not America's favorite pastime anymore, Vinny. No, it's not. That's that's a totally dated phrase I use. Yeah, it is. America's favorite pastime, of course, now TikTok. <laughs> yeah, that's probably accurate. Something based in China. Probably accurate. And, and the Dodgers are 1-0. Oh. The Dodgers are 1-0. Yeah, oh. That's the record in baseball. For the a ba- 5-2 win over the Padres. The Korea. baseball gods have already smiled on the Dodgers. They took the lead against the Padres on an easy little ground ball that went through the webbing of Jake Cronenworth's glove. And as I told Vinny in one of the breaks, you can understand a baseball player maybe at the end of August using the same mitt over the course of a year, maybe the webbing busting out on him then. First game of the season? You don't have that bad boy tied up? We were watching that live, and you're like, oh, bouncing ball? And I was like, hey, just, did he just flip yeah. that? Yeah, we, I think your exact like, words were, oh, great play there, Crowenworth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Went That's right it. through his right. glove. Right. You know, if the, opening day. An the, opening day. This is disgusting. If the playoffs started today, the Dodgers would have the number one seed. It's disgusting. <laughs> Isn't that disgusting? Yeah. But then they would have to wait for all the wild. Yeah, cards. that's true. And they'd that's get true. rusty, and they uh-huh. would inevitably saw it happen. Uh, so yeah, so um, it's underway. Dodgers and Padres, and then they'll come back uh, opening day around Major League Baseball's next Thursday. For the Arizona Diamondbacks, that means the uh, beginning of a three-game series against the Colorado Rockies. But last night, Diamondbacks were playing the Cubs at Sloan Park in a Cactus League game. Eduardo Rodriguez is on the mound, the number three starter. He pitched an inning. He went out there in between, was warming up for the second inning, and had to exit the game with what the Diamondbacks afterward called left lat tightness. Man, let's Terrible hope name this for a is band. yeah. Let's hope this is nothing. This would be a dreadful break if their new Lee acquired number three starter, the guy that's going to make this rotation hole. Their is, biggest is acquisition miss, is going to miss. It. Yeah, is going to miss any time, significant time. And, and I'm getting to, down the road here, but we know all these things work with pitchers, right? Forearm tightness. Uh oh. Well, elbow soreness. Uh oh. I'll, I'll take lat tightness over elbow or yes, shoulder any day. or any, any day. Any day of the year. Forearm, yeah. 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 Any day of the year. Forearm is usually the. the Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when you're really screwed for the season. So, um, Tori Lavello did not, you know, by all that were in attendance, didn't sound all that concerned. In fact, the quote was, I'll give you a deeper, more detailed update tomorrow. But for right now, we're going to call it left lat tightness uh lavello wasn't even sure that uh, rodriguez would undergo an mri apparently he had some sort of scapular injury that he left a game last year when he was pitching for the tigers at the end of the year all right um you know left that start and then came back and started six days later are they related no uh and at this point of the year you're going to be overly cautious especially with an important part of of the uh, rotation so you're hoping for the best but Mm -hmm. it's not I mean, look look at what they're dealing with in New York right now with Garrett Cole shut down for two yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, season. that's that's much worse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess I, you can count your blessings and just hope for the best and hope this is just a tiny little setback for Eduardo. Yeah, but if um, let's go down that road, if it is something that's going to keep him on the sideline for a while, you still have Gallon Kelly one two that would bump up Brandon Fott to three, and those candidates for. That five spot in in Henry and Jarvis and uh, Ryan Nelson, Mm -hmm. now it's two of those three to Mm -hmm. complete your rotation. Not exactly where they wanted to be, especially after they addressed that position in the offseason by getting Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, listen. Yeah, so wouldn't it be the cruelest of all things to have to do like a a bullpen game? (laughs) First week of the season. (laughs) The bullpen's fresh, right. at least. It's game right. five of the Diamondback season, and welcome to bullpen game right. number one. Joe Mike, Mantiply, uh, Mike, starting pitcher. Yeah, Mike Hazen would pull all of his hair out if that happened. Joe Mantiply will be starting today's game. Hey, we, <laughs> we talked to Joe when we were out at Salt River Fields, uh-huh. and uh, look, with all due respect to Joe, I remember in real time when those things popped up in the playoffs, you're like, oh, no, a bullpen game with Joe Mantiply? How's this going to go? He was actually really good in those situations. Except for the one. Except for the one. Except for the one. The first, the first no, couple were good. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. He handled it very, the, very well. You don't want to go down that road. No, it's, it's also especially because we kind of said in the offseason, Eduardo Rodriguez, great addition, but they don't need just one pitcher. There was a reason that even in the playoffs that they had to go to a bullpen game because they really only had three of a five-man rotation. Right. I mean, so by only getting one starting pitcher, you leave yourself – you know, 
in danger if something one of those guys goes down. Well, to be perfectly clear, and and, and I mean the way I see it anyway, they had pitchers that could have started. They just trusted the bullpen option more than they trusted those guys. So I guess yeah, that's like not having a starting pitcher if you can't have the trust to put that guy on the mound. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a tough decision because you're putting guys in situations that they're not used to. And they're fi- well, they're without fifth- a doubt. And I hate bullpen games. Yeah, I'm, just yeah, gener- I'm not a fan even when either. they work out. Not a fan either. Those guys you mentioned, uh, Nelson and Tommy Henry and Jarvis. Jarvis are fine number 5 starters, but and they could get better. They could improve this year. They're but as of right now, that's what they are. Is they're true five starters and you don't want to, you know, even once you bump them up to the fourth position in the rotation it's a little yeah this is, this is why we're just going to cross our fingers and hope for the best here with eduardo this is not this is not the way you want to begin the season yeah um and so yeah and so we're going into the season as zach Allen is the ace and you had mentioned that on, on a list of rankings of pitchers that merrill kelly actually rated below eduardo rodriguez i am going to tell you right now merrill kelly is going to finish higher in the cy young voting and post a better era than zach Allen or anybody on the diamondbacks that's your big I'm calling prediction. my shot. Yeah, the Athletic did a um, they did a, a tears piece. Um, it was a pretty interesting read um, on starting pitchers that they consider just guys mm-hmm. all the way up to one of one. And the mm-hmm. one of one that they arrived at was was Garrett Cole was the guy who was in a class by himself in terms of starting pitchers. Uh, let me pull this up. Uh, the Aces Project is what they called it. MLB insiders rank starting pitchers from just a guy to number one. So it was Andy McCullough, Will Salmon, and uh, Sayadev Shar- Sharma put this piece together. And I'm scrolling through it. And the way they have it described was the inner circle, unanimous ones. Tier two, guys with 90 to 99.5 ratings. Tier three, the pool of applicants, 80 to 89.5. And it goes all the way down to tier five, number fours and number fives, everyone else. And that's below 59.5. And that's where Kelly... Even after what he did last year, came I, in with a rating of I'm 55. Stunned. I'm stunned. So, it, look, I know you're really high on Merrill mm-hmm. Kelly, and I, I'm not quite there with you, but mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of a slight. But yeah, listen. Zach Gallen was ranked 10th. Eduardo Rodriguez ranked 44th. Merrill Kelly ranked 45th. Okay. The top 10 was... Uh, now, Merrill Kelly has to stay hydrated. He has to stay healthy. Yes. But, but I think that, that dude at the end of last season was just... A monster. He looked like a top 10 he guy did. in yeah. MLB. He did. he did. He did. The top 10, Garrett Cole, one. Spencer Strider, two. Corbin Burns, three. Zach Birdie! Wheeler, four. Jacob deGrom, five. Still, even though he pitches two games a year. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi Yamamoto, six. Who has pitched zero games right. in any year. <laughs> right. Luis Castillo for the Mariners, seven. Blake Snell, eighth. And Kevin Gossman and Zach Gallen tied for 10th. Oh, okay. Yeah. I All thought right. that was an interesting list. Okay. There you go. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.